ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to a class popularity video for the Western release of Lost Ark. Today, we're going to go over the class selection rates for both NA and EU. So you get a sense on which classes are being picked the most and which ones are being picked less often. I know some people like picking their main class based on what's the most popular or what is the least popular. And some of you out there may just be curious on which classes are getting the biggest buzz. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Who knows, I might even be streaming right now. So I spent some time pulling the class selection stats from in the game and then compiled it all together in some graphs for you to look at which classes are being picked the most in each region. I picked one server from EU Central, one from EU West, one from NA East, and one from NA West, four different regions uh, to see which classes are the most popular. Let's start with Western Europe as a region. We'll be looking at both EU Central and the new EU West as a side-by-side -side comparison, just to make sure that we're looking at each individual server and keeping track of trends so we know what's going on. For EU Central, I pulled the stats from Trixian, and from EU West, I pulled the stats from Tortoy. Now I'll add one disclaimer here and it'll become more apparent when we get to North America, but I think it's important to stress that these are the character creation statistics. It doesn't necessarily mean that these are the number one main for everyone in the game. However, this game is very alt centric. So many people play lots of things. So this generally tells you how many of each class are being created in each region. However, there is a bot problem in all Western regions right now where there are people, you know, the gold farmers that are coming in and creating characters and then using it to sell gold. Um, and it looks like just because the first um, advanced class you can pick, the first subclass is warrior and the first advanced class is berserker. So when they're spam creating lots of characters, you're going to see a large uptick in berserker simply because the bots are inflating that. But we'll still see the rest of the distribution from the classes and we'll also be able to see relative popularity even with the inflation of Berserker. So you'll see uh, initially that Warrior is the most created class in the game, the most created archetype. This is mostly because of Berserker and Paladin, both very popular classes. Gunlancer in many regions is about middle of the pack or maybe even towards the bottom, which isn't too surprising considering he has a dodge move that goes backwards, uh, generally plays pretty slow and takes some getting used to. So not everyone wants to move towards that kind of slower style. Um, if they like it, they love it, that's great, but it's not going to be the most popular class in the game as it does play very differently from any other class. So Berserker tops the charts. Now, this isn't as egregious as it is in North America. It's going to be much bigger when we get there, uh, but you'll see that it, 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 it isn't too surprising. Even with the bot creation, I think Berserker is still going to be one of the top five classes in the game. I think aesthetically it fits really well. It's an archetype, the Berserker, the Bloodlust, the, the, that kind of archetype always does well in Western regions. Uh, so it's not surprising to see it here. In EU West, Tortoik, we're seeing Berserker at 19.4%. And then the Berserker in EU Central Trixian at 17%, both topping the charts. And number two is Sorceress, which again, isn't that surprising. I think most people like playing that traditional caster, wizard, mage, witch kind of playstyle. Magic is a really big thing theme in fantasy RPGs and Lost Ark is no different. And I think this actually represents really well why they decided to delay Summoner. You might be one of the people out there that's desperately waiting for Summoner. And I know there's people that were upset when Summoner got delayed and Sorceress got pulled in. But I think this data here shows why they pushed so hard to get Sorceress in the release because they didn't have a true traditional caster. Neither Summoner nor Bard filled that mage role in its truest sense. So I think getting Sorceress in there makes sense. And you see a lot of these everywhere. It's a great class. It's one of the newer classes in the game. So the effects are up to date. It feels really good. It sounds really good and it's a, a blast to play. Next up for Western Europe, we have the two assassins, Shadowhunter and Deathblade. In EU West, it looks like they're about equal, um, which is pretty cool to see them matching each other like this, about 50-50. Uh, and then in EU Central, Shadowhunter wins out a little bit. It's not too surprising, especially with uh, a lot of the Western players coming from games like World of Warcraft, where Demon Hunter, that demonic style aesthetic is a very popular one. Um, and I think that the Shadow Hunter hits it right on the nose. So a lot of people really are gravitated towards that transformation, having the demonic energy, the big war glaives, the 
the demon blade so i think that fits really well um and i think conversely death blade probably is is one of the most well-made classes in the game i think it plays very well all the abilities work really well together they look and sound great um and the play style with the passive and the ultimates just fits perfectly i think it's just they, they they did one of the best uh designs with the death blade and if you're a death blade main i'm kind of preaching to the choir on that one so that archetype is going to sit about 9.5 percent in eu west and then eu central uh shadow hunter wins out a little bit but the two assassins are still quite popular in the fifth slot for eu central is paladin at 7.61 percent and for eu west it's one slot down at 7.3 percent so again uh and i think paladin one of the newer classes being really awesome aesthetically fits really well uh, but also is able to play that support role and is a the only male support in the game so if anyone who likes supporting but also likes paladins paladin is a very popular archetype um, so this one allows you to deal damage as you're leveling it has a really cool aesthetic but also allows you to uh, play that support role and it's the only male support so if you want to be a male character and you want to support paladin is your only option uh, in, in these regions and actually in the world since the, the new support in Korea is female. So that kind of makes sense there. We see Striker taking the fifth slot in EU West. Uh, this one kind of shocked me. A lot of the martial artists are towards the bottom. I think that uh, with all the options of ranged and tankiness, playing the up close classes, though some of them have pretty good AOE and mobbing. Um, I'm surprised to see just Striker so high up on EU West uh, as a main character, but again, one of the newer classes uh, feels really, really good. And actually, I think it has one of the best ultimates in the game in how it feels. Uh, for EU Central, Striker has moved down to slot eight, uh, a little bit further down there, but still the highest of all the martial artists. Uh, and it's pretty easy to see why. I think that they kind of took what they had with the Ward answer and improved upon it when they released the Striker as the male counterpart. For EU Central, the sixth slot goes to Gunslinger, and I think the story is the same for War Dancer as it is for Deadeye, is that, you know, they made Gunslinger as the female counterpart to Deadeye later on, and they kind of learned what they learned uh, about Deadeye from it being in the live servers, and they made improvements to it. And honestly, in, in some cases, it does feel like the Gunslinger is kind of a, a, a Deadeye V2.0. Um, if you're a Deadeye main, that doesn't mean that, you know, it's it's not worth maining. The Deadeye is awesome, uh, but I think they, they made some polish and quality of life improvements. And personally, I think there's just a power scale there. Uh, you know, it's just some people want to be, um, you know, the the a female character gunslinger, um, maybe fit into that kind of like, I always think of Kate Beckinsale from Van Helsing and, and that kind of style. Uh, but it also like, you know, you, you don't have to get as close. The gunslinger plays with rifle at range, which is safer and easier. The dead eye has to be like right up close, but doesn't really have any uh, survivability or tankiness. So it's it's much easier, more straightforward play. Though since it is a class that has 16 abilities at cycles, it still is one of the higher skill ceiling classes. And then you'll see gunslinger kind of closer in with paladin and striker in EU West. So definitely, you know, probably in the upper uh, upper third of the popularity of classes in the game. And next comes bard, uh, which is a little surprising that it's kind of low. I think Bard actually is the most popular class in Korea. It is a class that was always needed. Bard and Paladin can always find groups, uh, being the only two supports in the Western release of the game. And uh, honestly, it does kind of have that mage aesthetic, but also is that minstrel uh, music user. So I think Bard, um, in general, my, people might shy away from it just because it doesn't have the same kind of combat potential of Paladin, though they both will deal less damage. And in some cases, soloing content as Bard can be tough, but it's hard to beat the healing and the buffing that you get from Bard. Um, and again, if you're someone who likes playing support, but you wanted to play a female support, Bard is your only option. So if you go down that road, it makes sense. I just expected Bard to be higher up in the list, maybe just because of how popular Bard is in other regions. So it doesn't mean that it's a bad class by any means. It's an awesome class and Bard is one of the best additions to any party, to be honest. And now we're moving into the second half, and this is where we start to see some differences between EU Central and EU West. Uh, some of the bottom ones are, are the same, but right here, as we kind of take the stop, you can see a noticeable drop after the last one we talked about. Um, in EU Central, we go from Bard and Striker down to Gunlancer, and it's a pretty big jump. You go from 5.7 to 3.9%. That is uh not negligible that is kind of like a you would you would clump these together into a new subgroup or a subplot of data 
So you have the Gun Lancer coming in. This is kind of where the more nuanced classes that don't have the mass appeal. And I think if you look at it from that way, um, some of the ones that are higher up in the list have that mass appeal. It's appealing to widely popular and well-known, long-standing archetypes and, and themes that people know and love and have loved for a long time. Gun Lancer obviously is, is heavily inspired by Monster Hunter. Um, and there are Monster Hunter mechanics in the game with Guardian Raids and things like that. Um, but again, it is a class that has to jump backwards with its movement ability, which takes some getting used to. Um, does move slower and even later on with some of the classes like um, even like Red Gun Lancer going a little bit of, of swiftness, you still are pretty slow. Um, and it's just different. But, uh, you know, it being a warrior, being tanky, the people that want a tank, since there are no official tank classes in the game, Gun Lancer still kind of hits about middle of the pack, although it is a you know, standard deviation lower than the uh, the classes that come before, but still pretty popular. And then if you look at the EU West, it is a little bit lower, um, just right around where the Bard is, so kind of like that useful. But this is where we're getting into the more niche classes. Coming after Gun Lancer on EU Central is the Soul Fist. And this one is super shocking to me. Uh, the hype and the excitement for Soul Fist specifically in North America and, and in South America, was pretty high. I think the idea of a Dragon Ball Z anime, uh, you know, key energy inspired class archetype was very interesting. And I think what we're going to see is we're going to see the Soul Fist popularity slowly dwindle over time because I think while the thematic idea of Soul Fist is really cool, I think the gameplay is a bit off-putting and it can be very challenging to master there's a lot that goes on with soul fist that no other class has to deal with it's the hardest ultimate in the, in the game to hit uh it has some you know interplay between your energy hits zero so you can't use abilities you have to pay attention to that and even if you go uh with energy overflow versus robust spirit uh, you still have a lot to think about uh where other classes may not have that much to juggle at once so i think that while it does have mass appeal aesthetically and thematically i think the gameplay is a little more niche uh, and, and it tracks kind of like those hardcore players that want a challenge um, or, or want just kind of something unique and different that's that's separate from other classes. You can see in EU West, the Soul Fist is down towards the bottom. Um, so EU Central definitely favors the Soul Fist more, but I, I honestly thought the Soul Fist was going to be much higher in the list, uh, all things considered. And then we have Artillerist for EU Central uh, towards in the, in the bottom five there. Uh, again, I think Artillerist is actually one of the most unique classes that I, I can't think of any classes that aesthetically fit that same feel, maybe in Terra or something, but I think the the man with big gun, uh, an actual artillerist, someone who's, who who specializes in artillery in a a fantasy RPG like this is is so fun and cool and memorable. So I think even if you don't play artillerist, it's one of those ones that you look at and you're like, oh, that's cool. They're dropping nukes and shooting missiles and flamethrowers and things like that. Or like the engineer in, in Guild Wars 2, right? You got a, a very unique play style in that. It is, again, one of those, uh, you know, different play styles you have to get acclimated to. It has very long delays on its abilities. So you have to plan ahead. Um, it probably plays the closest to maybe like a Black Mage in Final Fantasy 14, where where you put your abilities and where you stop to cast them is a big part of your planning for each encounter. And I think as the Legion ra raids come out, people will start to figure out just kind of the depth of Artillerist. Uh, and then follow up on that is the Sharpshooter. Um, this, I think, is actually much higher than it is in uh, NA uh, overall, just because I think, I, I, I'm not sure why Sharpshooter gets the the rap that it does. In EUS, you can see the Sharpshooter is actually higher than Gun Lancer and Artillerist, closer towards the middle, so it does have that popularity. But for some reason, this class, despite being you know, a very mass appeal, archer, bow, hawkeye style theme um, tends to be on the lower end of popularity, um, which if you're a sharpshooter main and you like being unique, then that's great. It means that, you, you know, you're going to have less sharpshooters running around, but it, it it's a great class. It performs very well. You'll meet a lot of excellent, highly skilled sharpshooters that will out damage you every single time uh, and are very reliable. Um, and I, I'm just surprised to see this so low, but uh, and EU Central a little bit lower than in EU West, uh, but definitely down there towards the bottom five. Third to last on EU Central, we have Deadeye, uh, which isn't all that surprising. Uh, in EU West, it's actually Deadeye is much higher than I think any other region uh, that I've looked at the stats for. 
Uh, and again, Deadeye, um, if you ever want to know the short version of what Deadeye differs from the gun Gunslinger, and it's just that the Gunslinger likes the rifle and plays at range for most of their big damaging abilities, and the Deadeye likes the shotgun and plays up close for the most of their uh, shotgun abilities. This, you know, with the exception being the handgunner um, or the pistolier build for Deadeye, where you just use the pistols, but most people use the enhanced weapon, which means they're going to be using a lot of the shotgun abilities, but uh, it doesn't really have any self-shielding. It doesn't have any protection. You have to be right up close behind the boss um, and doing that constantly uh, without dying or getting hit by things is, is kind of a challenge. So that tends to turn people off about Deadeye and, and why I'm, I'm sure it's a little bit lower, but a very powerful class. And to be honest, is probably first up on the list to get a buff uh, this year. Um, starting in Korea and then moving out. Because I think, honestly, for how hard they work, their damage could be a lot higher. And I don't think there's any kind of fundamental flaws. I think they just need to, you know, they just need some some pump. Like, they just need some more pump to, to go along with, with the, the challenges that they face. But super fun, very stylistic, really cool to look at, and very flashy. Uh, makes you feel like you're Dante from DMC or, you know, it, it, I think it, it hits that really well. I think the gameplay can just turn some people off. And the last two for EU Central and EU West are War Dancer and Scrapper. And this is going to be a bit of a theme. I think in most places, uh, Scrapper, War Dancer, Sharpshooter, and Deadeye um, tend to be in the bottom rung just for popularity. Um, and I think it's for a few reasons, maybe just because the other classes are just, you know, so much more thematic uh, and, and don't require as much um, positioning to get off what they have. I think War Dancer probably is just, I like, <laughs> my, my first main was War Dancer. And I honestly, I like to joke and call the War Dancer my T-Rex arms because most of War Dancer's abilities are very close range, very short reach. Um, and so you have to pay kind of very close attention to where you're standing, how close you are standing uh, to get your abilities to land. Whereas most classes, have some leeway in their range and radius um but i think and, and the other thing that kind of hurts the war dancer is i think tier one and tier two war dancer uh is one of the worst feeling classes uh you know al along with like shadow hunter demonic in tier one and things like that where you just you don't have all the tools you you need yet to make the character feel good i think tier three war dancer when you have wealth runes you have high swiftness uh you have your tripods and your gems um, is one of the most explosive and fantastic classes to play. Getting there can be a bit of a chore because in tier one and tier two, I think War Dancer just feels kind of flat. Um, and also you have to kind of, you, you are quite squishy uh, and you have to be very close to do all your things. So I think that turns people off as well. Versus Striker, who has a little more reach, a little more burst, doesn't have to stay near the boss as long as the War Dancer does, um, and doesn't have the same kind of damage window and self buffing that War Dancer does. And Scrapper, I think for similar reasons, um, doesn't have the same um kind of short range scrapper has good reach and good mobbing and good aoe um the downside with scrapper that i think puts it further down is just that uh it, it is slower uh, it's a lot of long locked animations up close and it's also being a slower class like the berserker uh does have uh back attack requirements and i think um just in general shockingly the the scrapper is very popular in korea but for some reason, uh, just didn't, didn't make the cut uh, here in Europe. Now let's move on to North America. NA East, we pulled from Azina, and NA West, we pulled from Mari. Uh, and this is where you'll see the uh, the actual, like the, the sheer impact that bots and bot spammers have on the character creation. You're gonna see so uh, Sorceress and Berserker uh, very, like almost orders of magnitude higher uh, than the rest, and that's just because there's just a lot of people creating Berserkers as a bot. So that's something to look at. Um, it's something that we're just going to have to deal with for now, and maybe as more bot prevention me measures come online, uh, we'll see this change. Uh, but this is what the game is showing. This is the stats. Um, so we'll kind of look at it as relative positioning, and we'll still see how the classes stack up against each other. But you can see that there are a lot of bots being created as Berserkers and as Sorceresses uh, in the game <laughs> right now, which is throwing us off. But we know that in the other regions, at least, Berserker and Sorceress are the most popular as well. And for the same reasons we talked about earlier, uh, it kind of fits in that. So you see Berserker and Sorceress way up there. Uh, but then, then as you go down to the rest of the classes in both NA West and NA East, you can see that things kind of normalize a good bit. But there are already some differences from uh, Western Europe that we saw earlier. So the first is 
Deathblade uh, is the number three in both NA West and NA East um, quite uh, confidently. So obviously where there may have been a difference where they were equal in, in EU West or they, you know, Shadowhunter won a little bit in EU Central, uh, Deathblade just kind of hits that mark. Um, it does kind of feel like it might, might hit there, but for whatever reason, Deathblade just sings to a lot of people um, after Berserker and Sorceress. And then rather than Shadowhunter taking the fourth slot as it did in Europe, Gunslinger takes the fourth slot. So Gunslinger, very popular in North America uh, as it stands right now here in March. Uh, so very popular class. I think it's got, you know, very flashy, very kind of sexy fun, but also has uh, a lot of depth and, and high skill stealing, which tends to attract some of your more, uh, a lot of players, I think in, in Western regions, they, they're a little more disparate in, in how they, they spread out their preferences for play style. So Gunslinger, very popular, but it is closely followed by Shadowhunter. So that kind of Demon Hunter aesthetic, that demon demonic aesthetic uh, hits home pretty hard. Um, and once again, NA East, NA West in the fifth slot, uh, or I guess the sixth slot here is Paladin. So the people that love that kind of Paladin aesthetic, that kind of theme, they're, they're picking up the Paladin. It's very popular. And then the Bard follows right after. So actually, uh, as we're seeing this compared to Europe, both NA East and NA West have more similarities between them than EU Central and EU West, uh, although the, one of the regions there is a little bit newer. So Paladin and then Bard. And again, I think there's just a subset of, of a population that wants to play support and these are your only two options so those two classes get up but uh, as it was with europe paladin and bard are uh in that order paladin first and then bard uh, and then we see striker very popular uh followed by soul fist for both regions um so pretty big uh easy pickup there and then right after soul fist we have artillerist so so far it's been identical in in placement not percentage but placement uh artillerist again for the same reasons we talked about earlier and this is where it starts to differ so for NA East, Deadeye takes the fifth to last slot here uh, versus NA West where Deadeye is the third to last. So a couple uh, a couple rungs further down uh, over that. Now in NA West, Gunlancer takes that spot, but you'll notice that Gunlancer in North America is actually further down than it was in either of the EU regions. So maybe it is just that fast play style. Maybe it's just the, the thematic of Gunlancer or maybe it's just the fact that uh, Monster Hunter took a while to make it make its way out to uh, specifically North America, but also just Western regions in general. Um, it was a game that was hard to get a hold of for a lot of gamers for a long time, mainly until we got Monster Hunter World. So uh, I guess maybe that thematic is there, or maybe people just don't like the slower play style uh, until later on. And right below that is War Dancer, and this is pretty common. So between NA East and NA West. Uh, War Dancer does beat out the bottom. It's in, in, in the does beat out the bottom two, so higher in popularity than in uh, Western Europe and Central Europe. Uh, so a little bit more popular, and maybe you know it's just an aesthetic thing, or maybe it is a playstyle thing. Uh, but War Dancer definitely a little bit more consistently up there. And then the last two slots in this order for NA West and NA East is uh, Sharpshooter and then Scrapper. So this is what I was talking about earlier: uh, the Sharpshooter being just for whatever reason just not as well liked as some of the other classes for you know it not for any reason that it's 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 bad it's a very good class the thematics are very cool i don't see it being reworked anytime soon um i think it just for whatever reason just isn't uh doesn't have that mass appeal um and then the last slot goes to scrapper and i think for the same reasons we talked about earlier uh, a little bit slower more back attack requirements doesn't have the same kind of positionals uh, a little more planning now you can play taijutsu scrapper which is faster um, a little bit more spammy high APM, but for whatever reason, uh, that's Scrapper in, in North America just doesn't have that same kind of appeal. Now, keep in mind that none of these means that this the class is good or bad. It doesn't mean that the class is, uh, you know, something you should main or shouldn't main. This is literally just the character creation stats. So what are being more picked by players and what are being picked less? But I think it's kind of cool just to look at uh, where these, these things are now. And if there's interest, I can do this maybe once a month uh, just to see how these trends change um, and see if as people get further into the game, they get their main characters figured out, they figure out how the game works. Maybe they start switching up which characters uh, they start kind of piling behind. But that's going to do it for me here today. I hope you liked it. Um, let me know down in the comments below what your main class is, what percent yours got in your region. Um, and any comments or questions you have for me uh, and, and 
thank you so much for for being here if you enjoyed yourself today leave a like down below you can support me and my work on patreon and view patreon exclusive content link in the description thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one